Okay, we're going to talk about rationalizing denominators with complex numbers. Sounds complicated, um, and it, there are some complicated aspects to this. So let's take a look at it. And um, the main thing is, is having an imaginary number. I, of course, represents the square root of negative 1. Um, but having an I in the denominator is something that is non-standard for math. And when they... Um, C and I in there, we're going to call that rationalizing the denominator. It's getting the I out of the denominator. So that's what we're focused on. Now, um, here's the original problem, and these are the multiple choice answers. So we're going to go 9 minus 5I over 1 plus 7I. And we're going to use the concept of multiplying it by 1, uh, just like you would to get a common denominator. We would multiply by 1, but it might have something like 3 and 3 in it something like that, but we're not going to use that. Watch what we're going to do. We're going to strategically use what they call the complex conjugate of the denominator. I'll say that again, complex conjugate of the denominator. This says 1 plus 7i in the denominator. We're going to go with 1 minus 7i, and you might be kind of confused, well, why are we doing that? But stick with me for just a minute, and let's see how that helps us. 1 minus 7i up here. So in effect, we are multiplying this thing by 1 because 1 minus 7i divided by 1 minus 7i is 1. So we're multiplying this by 1. Now, we're not changing the value of it, but we are going to change the way it looks. Okay, and how do you multiply this? Well, we've got to use FOIL. So let's use FOIL. Let's start up here at the top. And FOIL is um, a way to multiply complex numbers or binomials. And uh, 9 minus 5i times 1 minus 7i. That's uh, 9 minus 1, the first two terms, 9. Uh, the outer terms, 9 minus 7i is negative 63i. And then the inner terms, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5i. And then the last two terms, negative 5 times negative 7i, and that's going to go to, well, it's negative times negative, so it's plus 35, and that was i times i, so it becomes i squared. Okay, and that's going to be important. We're going to finish working on that. Let's, in fact, let's take that numerator all the way out. So we've got, uh, let's combine some like terms. We've got a negative 63 and a negative 5i right there. That is negative uh, 68i. And then we've got a 9 that doesn't go with this plus 35i squared. But what we're going to do is we're going to use our knowledge of, well, i squared is equal to uh, negative 1. So we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. And we're going to, so we're going to cancel that out and replace it with negative 1. And when you multiply 35 times negative 1, it basically changes it to negative 35. So in effect, an i squared just changes the sign of the thing in front of it because you are multiplying by negative 1. All right, so negative 35 and positive 9 gives us negative 26. All right, get the red color. All right, so, um, that just seemed to complicate the numerator. I, I'll admit that. But let's see what happens down here in the denominator. We're going to do FOIL again. The first two terms, 1 times 1, is equal to 1. And then we've got, in the middle, um, we've got plus 7i times 1. So that's plus 7i. And we've got negative 7i times 1 for the outer terms. That's minus 7i. Aha! Maybe you notice this, plus 7i minus 7i. Let's do the last two terms, 7i times negative 7i. That's negative 49i squared. All right, so look what happened down here. We've got like terms right here, but plus 7i and minus 7i cancel each other out. So we don't even have that term in there. So we still we've got the 1 out front, and then this i squared, it gets replaced. So that's negative 49, um, and the i squared gets replaced with uh, negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 49 is plus 49. So we got plus 49 right here. And you can see what happened is the denominator canceled out the i's by multiplying it by this um, strange looking thing. We're going to call this the complex conjugate. And a conjugate, to conjugate a verb uh, in a Spanish class I remember was to change the ending of the verb. So Conjugating a complex number is changing the ending. The original complex number was 1 plus 7i, and this becomes 1 minus 7i. So it was a strategic way to get the i out of the denominator. All right, up in top, we still have negative 26 minus 68i, and this can reduce. Okay, 
if you notice, uh, let's see, 2 goes into every one of these terms. You can think of it as splitting it out. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and split this out. It's negative 26 over 50 minus 68 over 50, because that denominator goes with both items in the top, and there's an i in it. All right, and now let's do the reducing. So negative, uh, 2 goes into negative 26, negative 13 times, and 25 times down below minus, again, we're reducing by dividing by 2, and 2 goes into 68 34 times, and let's see if there's anything else we can reduce. I think that's it. In fact, that is the answer, and we go up here, we've got negative 13 over 25 minus 34 over 25 i, so it is letter C, and we just had to reduce and split it. Okay, Whew, that is a little complicated. Well, let's go to the next one. Take a look, stick with me. All right, so you tell me, of course I can't hear you, but what are we going to multiply this one by in this uh, big one here so that we can get rid of this i in the denominator? Yes, we're going to do the complex conjugate of this, so we're just going to go 4 plus 8i. Hopefully you got that right. All right. And uh, I'll work on my handwriting up here. All right, and we're going to go 4 plus 8i over here as well, and now we're going to do foil to um, to multiply these. So on the top, on the numerator, I've got 1 times 4 is 4, uh, in the, and then i got 1 times 8i is plus 8i, and in the middle two terms I've got 5i and 4, so that's plus 20i, and on the end i got 5i times 8i, or plus 40i squared. Make that bar a little further. Okay, down below, so it looks like it's more complicated up above, uh, but down below, we should be able to get rid of our i's. So we're going to, first two terms, 4 times 4 is 16. And then the outer terms, we're going to do 4 plus, 4 times 8i, which is plus 32i. And the inner terms, negative 8i times 4 is minus 32i. So these are going to cancel each other out because you got plus and minus. And then the last two terms, negative 8 and positive 8, that's negative 64 I squared. All right, let's see how that translates. All right, so we got 16, and hey, there's that I squared. It gets replaced with a negative 1 times the negative 64. It becomes plus 64. So I got 16 and 64, or 78. Ooh, because these things don't have 78 in it, so let's see what's going to happen. All right, and I just want to make sure I'm doing everything right. Looks good. No, that does not look good. <laughs> I can't add. I know you're probably screaming it through there. 16 plus 64 is not 78. It is 80. That still is not one of these denominators. I'm suspecting it's going to be one of the 20s because maybe we're going to get to reduce everything by 4. So let's combine like terms up here. We've got uh, 28i, and we've got 4 on the front end, and we've got uh, plus 40i squared, but we know the i squared is going to get replaced with a negative 1, which is going to change the sign of the coefficient of that so it's minus 40. All right, let's continue this. 40, uh, sorry, negative 40 and 4, that's negative 36. I'm putting it out front because the real component goes first in a complex number, plus 28i, and that's all divided by 80. Now let's see if we were right about reducing. 4 goes into this 20 times, 4 goes into 36 9 times, negative 9, and 4 goes into 28 7 times, so we've got negative 7, plus 7i over 20. Negative 9 plus 7i over 20, so it's B. All right, sorry about my bad, bad handwriting. I'm working off of a tablet, and I'm getting used to it. I got one more I want to show you because this, is, uh, this one should go kind of quick. I've got a 4i as a denominator, and you might say, well, that's not a complex number. That's just the imaginary component, but there's no real part. You could think of this as 0 plus 4i because there was nothing in front of it. So what would the complex conjugate be? 0 minus 4i. So we don't really need the zeros. Let's get rid of those. So that's what we're going to use in our uh, multiplication process here of this complex conjugate. Okay, so it had a 4i under it, and we're going to multiply uh, by negative 4i over negative 4i. All right, and there's another way we could do this. But let's see. So 4i times negative 4i is negative 16i squared, and you already know that that's going to come out to 16 because the i squared is going to be negative 1 
times the negative 16 changes the sign of that. All right, on top, we've got to do a little distributive property. Negative 4i times 9 is negative 36i, and negative 4i times negative 7i is plus 28i squared. All right, you know what's going to happen. i squared is going to get replaced with a negative 1. Negative 1 times the 28 in front is going to turn that into negative 28. All right, and why did I put that up front? Because it's the real component, and the negative 36i is going to go in the back. Negative 36i. Now, um, let's see. Looks like everything is divisible by 4. Um, so we're going to divide everything by 4. Let's go grab another color. All right, 4 goes into this, negative 7 times 4 goes into this, negative 9, we still have the i, and 4 goes into this 4 times, so it's negative 7 minus 9i over 4, or letter C. Uh, real quick, if you got a second, I wanted to show you that you could have used, in this case, uh, negative i over negative i, and I just want to show you this because then you don't have to reduce at the end. In the denominator, I'll have negative 4i squared, and that, of course, is the i squared is going to change this to positive 4, so I got my 4 there. And negative i up here is going to go, well, it's negative 9i and plus 7i squared. The i squared is going to cancel or put a negative 1 in there. It's going to change the sign of this negative 7 in front of it, so it's negative 7 minus 9i. I just wanted to show you that if you strategically use, when you only have a single, just the bi portion of the complex number down here, that you can use negative i or i. If this is positive, use negative i. If this is negative, use positive i. And then you can get rid of the, uh, the need to reduce it later. If that confused you, stick with this method and then just make sure that you reduce if possible. That's it. And uh, well, that should be it. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, have fun practicing.